For this four minute wonder, I'm on Watergate Row. Now the rows are Chester's unique architectural feature. Today, they may not feel that unique because since the late 20th century, we've had tiered shopping malls, which now perhaps don't make the rows seem so special, except of course the buildings on them are old, spanning the centuries from the Middle Ages to modern times. Now the characteristic of the rows are these galleried walkways that run through the fronts of the buildings at first floor level. There was a recognisable system in place roughly by 1350, although they'd probably evolved over the previous 100 years. So the rows are about 700 or even 800 years old. Now the key features of the row, as I've said, is this, this galleried walkway that runs through, but you also have the stall boards. Now the stall board is the raised shelf between the walkway and the railings that look out on the street. Now the purpose of the stall board, well, it's there to display wares, but also what it did was give headroom for people going into the shallow cellars or undercrofts that are at the base of the buildings. Another feature of the row system is there are not steps up to each plot, to each property, to each building. They're irregularly spaced along the row. And what this does, it gives the advantage of space to the buildings. Now, the commercial advantages of the row system was that there were shops on this first floor level, a bit like there are today, although there are now many bars and restaurants and cafes. And it would allow anyone to be out of the muck of the street, because it would have been a pretty grim place down on the street. And also they would have been out of the rain, out of the snow, out of the elements. One of the unusual characteristics of the row is here we are on the walkway level, and yet if you look over the railings, the street is below. But if you walk down an alleyway, as there is next to me here, you walk onto what we call the back lane, and here it's Weaver Street, which is at the same level as the row. Now, one thought behind that change in topography is that the medieval builders would have cleared the Roman ruins along the street, because here we're on Via Principalis, Diva's main street, but not at the back. And the buildings would have collapsed, rubbish would have been thrown there, and so there's this change in level. The row buildings are built over what's called undercrofts. These are shallow cellars and typically you go down just a few steps. And the reason they're not deep cellars is because the medieval builders would have had to excavate the sandstone because here in the city, the sandstone is at the surface. The undercrofts were used as warehouses, as storerooms, but also showrooms and also as taverns. And of course, some of them are still wine bars and pubs and gin bars to this day. In some of the undercrofts, you can still see medieval masonry, which dates from either the 13th or the 14th century, depending on the undercroft. Some of them have spectacular vaulted sandstone structures, a key one being number 11 Watergate Street. Some have massive stone arches that are again medieval. And some have 18th century brick barrel vaults where the bricks form the arch across the entire undercroft. So you might be having your glass of wine or your beer or your coffee or a meal in a medieval structure. So that's my four minute wonder on Chester's Rose. And I hope that that's given you an idea of some of the key features of the row system.